I want to bring in Democratic Senator Chris Coons. You're leaving for Munich tonight. So I wonder in advance of this trip what you're hearing about the nervousness from NATO allies. Well, Chris, this weekend, dozens of leaders from around Europe, North America and the world will be gathering at the annual Munich Security Conference. The future of NATO and the reliability of the United States as an anchor ally of NATO is going to be on the menu, on the agenda. I was recently in Poland and Slovakia with my Republican colleague, Mike Rounds. And both of those governments have exceeded the 2% of GDP spending that's been a commitment for a long time. In fact, Poland is spending 4% of their GDP. They have been forceful and reliable partners in our work against Russians, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Can I Absolutely stop you there? Can every I... head of state asks me, can we count on the United States if Donald Trump is your next president? And these shocking comments by former President Trump reinforce that they have good reason to be concerned. I want to ask you, because not everybody may understand the 2% GDP, right? Sure. So, I mean, Trump has, I think, effectively messaged that on other countries aren't paying their dues and owe us a tremendous amount of money. I hear that from voters. It's not true. There aren't dues. There is that guideline, 2% of, of GDP for investing in their own defense. And as you say, that amount is growing in many countries. But Trump has been successful on this issue and not just with his rabid base, because it's easy to understand, oh, they're not paying their dues. We're, you're paying it instead. They owe us money, right? So how should Democrats be countering that? First, by saying that's just not true, and it's wrong. It's a profound misunderstanding of NATO, its purpose, its history, its funding, and its function. NATO is a collective security alliance. It has only invoked Article 5 of the NATO Treaty once in defense of the United States. And our NATO allies deployed to Afghanistan alongside us after 9-11. They lost men and women in the line of duty in combat. They contributed millions, even billions of dollars fighting alongside us for 20 years. The United States asked our NATO allies to step up, and they did. So the idea that somehow they owe us dues and that this is some protection racket where a former president like Donald Trump can threaten to throw them to the Russian wolves if they don't pay up is a laughable and insulting mischaracterization of NATO. NATO is about protecting each other through collective security investments and modernization. Today, well, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is the latest challenge to NATO unity. And President Biden has capably led a global effort to mobilize 50 countries, most of them the members of NATO, but not all. And together, they have contributed more than we have to the defense of Ukraine. They've accepted millions of refugees. We haven't done that. They have provided billions in environment economic support to Ukraine, and they've provided most of their military equipment and stocks that have been needed. The United States has been a key part of this effort, but bluntly, our allies have been at the forefront. So what President Trump, former President Trump, has said is an insulting mischaracterization of how NATO works. So let me ask you about something else that's going on in the Hill, if I can, Senator. The House Intel Chair, Mike Turner, released a statement just a short time ago that said his committee has made available to all members of Congress information concerning a serious national security threat, though he does not name that threat. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan talked at the White House press briefing and last hour said people should not panic. I personally reached out to the Gang of Eight, it is highly unusual, in fact, for the National Security Advisor to do that. I did that uh, to set up a meeting. The, the Senate's not here. The four House members have agreed to that meeting. This is well before Congressman Turner came out today. We'll have that conversation tomorrow. I'm not going to say anything but further. So I don't know how much uh, you've read in on this. Uh, do you know what the threat is, how serious it is? and? Turner's point that he makes in this statement that he, he put out is that he wants President Biden to declassify all the information so that it can be public and it can be dealt with. Would you be in favor of that? We should not be conducting sensitive national intelligence and security discussions by press release and on cable news interviews. 
Uh, I have reached out to colleagues uh, on the intelligence community, committee and in the intelligence community. I am not alarmed. I think this is uh, a significant issue, but one that is uh, well understood and is being dealt with. And beyond that, I really shouldn't say anything. Senator Chris Coons, safe travels to Munich. We thank you for taking the time to talk to us.